Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special 194 for April 2nd, 2014, covering Amazon's announcement of the Fire TV streaming video box. Welcome to this live special event of Amazon's streaming TV announcement. Uh, we don't know exactly what they're going to announce, but they are announcing it as we speak. The event uh, has just begun, and we're joined this morning by Peter Kafka, who is a senior editor for Recode. Uh, welcome, Peter. Hello. How are you? Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm very well. And so what we're doing, they, they do not have a live video stream coming out of the event. We are following uh, the live blogs and other sources. And uh, as I understand it, the event has begun. They are showing uh, Amazon Digital Video customers. It's This is the segment uh, that you see in just about every uh, product announcement where they start out bragging about how big they are, how... Uh, how awesome they are and how many customers they have. So that's essentially what's happening now. Peter Limp is currently on the stage. Um, I'm not familiar with Peter Limp. Uh, Peter, do you know who this is? I do not. So I'm confessing my ignorance live on the yeah, internet. Yes, me too. Um, usually, you know, usually uh, Jeff Bezos doesn't like to share the spotlight too much, but uh, he's pointing out that their digital video uh, has experienced 350% growth um, I get presumably from zero. <laughs> it's pretty easy to do from very small numbers. Uh, and he also points out that Netflix and Hulu are doing well. So that could suggest something you suggested, Peter, in your uh, piece yesterday, I believe it was, that, suggesting that this could um, involve other players like Netflix. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's definitely going to have other other services besides uh, Amazon, um, right, which it has to, right? Um, if you're gonna If you're going to put a box on your set, or a dongle, or whatever it is. I think it's me a box. It can't just play Amazon Video. It's got to have other stuff. Otherwise, why would you swap out your Apple TV or your Roku player if you couldn't get Netflix? Yep. And and they're they're emphasizing search now. They're saying one of the problems with existing uh, streaming video services is that search is is just uh, lousy. And that is of course a very good point. Uh, he's demoing a search on Roku and saying that you have to hunt and peck your th your way through an alphabet grid. It takes perseverance. I I think that that's a universal pain point for anybody who uses any sort of uh, TV interface, including uh, Apple TV, where you have to go peck through the letters and you have to move the cursor one letter at a time. And then oop, there's the letter T, and then you have to move it over to where the next letter is. Yeah, that is there's, a horrible user interface. The interface is a problem, but also right. Think about I mean, some of it's endemic to the way this is structured, where you've got a bunch of different apps. Um, with their own catalogs, right? So um, no one's yet built something that sort of searches across all the apps. I'd be surprised if they have that, but if they do, great. Yeah, that would be surprising uh, and welcome. Okay, let's see. So they're they're still talking about this, and um, you know, it's a curious um, fact that they're breaking into this uh, with a box. This would be, I guess, their second line of consumer electronics devices um, if you consider the all the Kindle tablets to be a line I probably two lines there's the readers and then there's the Android tablets that are more all-purpose but but essentially the Kindle tablets are a line and and I would assume and of course we will find out eventually that the the uh, Amazon's lab lab 126 I believe it's called it's their kind of Silicon Valley uh, design uh, hardware lab. They're very secretive, and they're probably they they very well could be behind uh, this product. Uh, oh yeah, I'm taking that as a given simply because I saw Brad Stone tweet that out, and anything Brad Stone says, I believe 100. Uh, percent Brad's the guy who wrote, among other things, the the Amazon book that came out last year. Yeah. So I think he even off, uh, offered up the uh, the code name um, that the people are using. Um, here, I'll dig it up since we're just talking here. What did Brad say? While you're looking that up, uh, just a little uh, bit more um, detail from the event. They are attacking Vizio, Roku, and Chromecast, so that is not surprising. <clears throat> those are the those are the products in the crosshairs. I don't believe they mention Apple TV yet as a competitor. Oh, there it is, Apple TV. And oh no, they're they're quoting from an Apple TV review, saying that using a four-direction pointer to type quickly will quickly frustrate you and bring you back 
nightmares of trying to type your name into the high scores list of an old Nintendo. That's a, that's a quote they have on the screen, and this is from an Apple TV review at some point. Uh, they're complaining about closed ecosystems for streaming video. Right. You can watch Primus and video on Apple TV, though. I, I do it, I do it uh, several times a week. You just need to use uh, um, an Apple TV and an Apple TV and, and airtime. Um, that's not the ideal situation, which is one of the reasons they're going to introduce this box. Um, but you certainly can watch Prime Video on Apple TV today. Good to know. So they are again. This is uh, this event is taking place in New York City, and uh, timed coincidentally uh, against the Microsoft Build Conference, which I believe is kicking off at eight thirty p.m. At 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I believe that's when the keynote begins for the Microsoft Build Conference. Um, but again, th this, is, um, this is Amazon talking about their streaming service. They're getting around to it. They started off by bragging uh, about uh, how well they're already doing with downloadable streaming, with downloadable movies and content. Now they're talking about the pain points of search performance and the fact that these uh, the existing solutions tend to be closed ecosystems. And, um, and the, the guy on stage says, we need to invent and simplify on behalf of customers. That is something nobody can argue with. Just going to go back and get his name again. Uh, he is somebody that I'm not familiar with. Peter Limp. Peter Limp is still on the stage. We have not seen uh, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos yet. Yeah, you, you may not see Bezos. I'm surprised. If he wasn't coming out at the beginning, I'd be surprised if he, sh he shows up any later. Yeah. W does that tell you anything? Does that tell you that he's too busy for it or that it's not important to him? Or what do you think? I, I, you, I don't know. You want I mean, to read in, anything into this? In the past, you know, when they've run out, when they've lined up new new Kindle uh, tablets, for instance, they brought press into Seattle and everyone was briefed on it. Um, that made it clear that that was important to him. So if he wanted to, you could guess that this is less important. But I, I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I believe he did personally launch all the major Kindle announcements. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. He was on stage for those and yeah. or they brought reporters to Seattle yeah. And, yeah. and everyone got exclusive. There were many exclusive interviews with him. Now, why do you think they did this in New York City rather than Seattle? I mean, it seems like kind of unnecessary unless... unless well, if, you want a... press, if you want press there, right, it's, 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 it's kind of hard to get to Seattle. Um, again, I don't think this is a core part of Amazon's strategy. I think this is an interesting... Is an interesting uh, uh, avenue for them, but I don't think it's a, it's a core. So if you, you could argue that that this simply just isn't the, the most important thing Amazon's going to do even this year. Yeah, it's not a phone, for instance. Right. So they're still making high level comments. Uh, Peter Limp is still making high level comments about this thing, um, and you know, one some of the things that I'm curious about. One of them, which I think would be an obvious Amazon strategy would be to enable shopping from the box, to be able to just instantly call up Amazon, go through, look at stuff. It would actually, could be, okay, so it's called Amazon Fire TV, apparently. That's, uh, they just announced the name of it. It's called Amazon Fire TV. Hey, look at that, a box. Yeah, and it's a box, yep. It looks uh, maybe slightly bigger than an Apple TV um, box here. It's like sharper edges, black. Um, but in the ballpark of an Apple TV size and shaped device. Uh, he says, this thing is tiny. It's incredibly powerful. It's unbelievably simple. There's a lot of adjectives there. So that's Amazon Fire TV. They get into smoke detectors. They're not going to be able to use the Amazon Fire branding. Just wouldn't be right. Anyway, one of the things I'm curious about is whether they make it turn it into a, a, a shopping center and a cash register. People talk it. I would assume that there's there's going to be a shopping option, although I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could do on, while you sit and watch TV, and a lot of things that people have not wanted to do so far. They haven't shown any interest, for instance, in sending email as they sit on their couch. Right. Um, and just because you might be able to buy something while you sit on your couch may not uh, uh, may not be appealing to lots of people who just want to watch TV. The the thing that's somewhat compelling about television shopping is that it's kind of 
a cliche for futurists. Like in the future, in the year 2000, people will, you know, shop for clothes on, you know, with this big screen TV in their living room. And so you can see them and they're, they, they're still, they're so good with that, with mobile apps and mobile yeah. shopping apps and like, you know, uh, and so, you know, I'd, I'd be really surprised. Okay, so back to the details. The Fire TV has a quad-core processor, uh, two gigs of RAM, so they're doing the speeds and feeds here. Apparently, the remote control is rectangular. Mm. So, some innovation there from Amazon, a rectangular remote control, the world's first, possibly. Yeah, it looks, it looks like there's a, a remote. Um, we'll see. I mean, uh, the, for instance, there's no keypad there, right? So I, I don't know how search gets that much better. Um, the, the thing, now that we know that it's a box and not a dongle, the thing that I'm most interested in, and the only thing I really care about is the pricing here. Are they going to make it cheap or are they going to bundle it in um, and give it to everyone who's got a Prime subscription for free? It's got a dual band, dual antenna Wi-Fi with MIMO, apparently. Mm -hmm. Um, I would guess, though, that the remote would be Bluetooth, but I don't know that. I don't see any details on that. Um, I mean, this would be a good point to point out that lots of people um, who have uh, Amazon Prime Instant Video don't know they have it or don't know what it is. Uh, Amazon has not done a good job of promoting this service, which but they're spending more than a billion dollars on a year yeah. to its average customer. Right. You know, anyone watching this live blog knows it, but but most people in the real world do not. Um, so again, one of the things they need to do here is figure out, you know, who cares about the specs is figure out how to explain this to a normal person. Why would you want to install a box into your TV? Right. And, and you know, back to your point about the difference from a priority standpoint between the Kindle line and this, you know, the Kindle, when uh, when the from the day the Kindle came out or was announced, they had that front and center on Amazon.com's homepage every day for, I think it was two years or something crazy. I mean, really prime real estate. And they just jammed it down everybody's throats. And, and as you say, this thing is just kind of out of sight, out of mind. The, the existing, you know, the previous uh, video offering, we'll see if they get more aggressive uh, with even, this. even if you search for a video that Amazon has on Prime Instant Video and that you would have access to because you're a Prime subscriber, it's very often hard to figure out that you could just click over and watch this thing for free. Yeah. Um, it, this baffles most people in the video industry. They don't know if this is some sort of intentional uh, uh, feint on Amazon's uh, part or, or they literally just have to figure out how to do a better job of it. So the remote is small, has seven buttons, and it's a five-way remote. It is connected with Bluetooth. Uh, there, one of the buttons looks like a, a microphone, uh, and it looks like a standard remote. You know, everybody loves remotes. You can't have too many remotes, right? Everybody's already got like 10 of them sitting there, so why not have an 11th one? They're the best. I'm also assuming that if you've got a Kindle tablet, um, you could use it um, as, a, as a better controller. Hmm. You certainly the, should be able to do that. I, you can do it with an Apple, with, a, with an iPhone, right? So it's just yeah. sort of table stakes. Yeah, the multi-screen movement. Um, so now we're looking at the interface. It looks like a pretty, you know, kind of Apple TV-esque where you have categories of movies, for example, going across, you know, action movies, comedies, and you drill down. You can scroll through the available titles. Uh, they are bragging about how fast it is to scroll through the titles. Uh, they are showing Netflix and Hulu apps on the on the screen. Uh, there's something called a watch list. It sounds like an NSA thing. The, uh, the watch lists exist already on on, on uh, the Prime Minister video. So, so they're just bringing this into the box. Just a rudimentary. I would like to watch a season of this TV show. And now they're talking about games. That's now we're now. This is interesting. I don't know what they're saying about games yet, but they apparently have mentioned them. So the menu items are search, home, TV, watch list, video library, games, apps, photos, and settings. So that, that's where the games cropped up. Uh, they haven't. They may not have mentioned it yet, but it showed up as one of the primary menu items. There's also a feature called ASAP, which, <laughs> love this, which predicts what you want to watch. So this gets back to Amazon's roots of uh, the recommended reading. What do they used to call it? They, they've been doing it for more than a decade, I think. 
where they you know recommend book titles to you back in the back in the right. day. Again, again, this is again sort of, sort of basic table stakes, right? Apple calls a genius. Netflix just builds it into the core of the service. Here are some things you might want to watch um, based on on what you've watched already or so, told us you liked. So apparently, it cues them up and starts to download those things under ASAP, so that when you go to play them, they play instantly. That's really interesting. So they're so confident that their recommendations are going to be acted upon that they are have either they download the whole thing or they start to download it. But in any event, you choose it and boom, it plays. Right. This is this is to prevent that 10 or 15 second lag when you've clicked on, if you've got an Apple TV where you click on something and it's got to buffer it a little bit for a, a minute or so before you watch it. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so they've stopped demonstrating the... Uh, the Fire TV, and now they're going to be looking at apps. Um, I'm looking at a screen of apps that they're showing. Uh, it shows all kinds of, they look like Android mobile apps that are TV related, uh, you know, uh, popcorn, you know, uh, what's the name of that one? But, you know, a lot of the essential apps, I see a couple of unique ones, Netflix, Hulu, Watch ESPN, Major League Baseball, Crackle, yeah, I think, uh, maybe I'm missing one, but I think just about everything on that screen is is what's available on Apple TV today, which again makes sense. You'd, you'd want to have those table stakes apps. Yep. Uh, and importantly, YouTube. And they say that more is coming. Right, and again, you, you would need to have all these apps if you were considering, uh, if, if you, I think most people who are going to buy these things don't have an Apple TV or have, aren't weighing this against an Apple TV, but you certainly want to have all the same options as an Apple TV or a Roku. Yeah. Uh, Roku has many, many more apps, uh, but most people only use a handful of them. They're also offering a best value buy box for videos. It shows you different options for watching a show so you can pick the cheapest one. So it'll show you a, a specific movie or a specific TV show on multiple services with the prices compared. And you can say, oh, yeah, I'm going to watch, watch it on this place where it's only 99 cents as opposed to the other place, which is $1.99. Or more use, or or, or or it would be crucial here. Would it also know that, but you could actually watch this for free on net. Uh, you know, this is already bundled into Netflix. And the screen I'm looking at there now says "Watch Now" on Hulu Plus. Right? It's one of the things uh, uh, that is very bad about video search right now is is being able to compare all the different services and figure out where your where the TV show or movie you want to watch is available today. They're, they have a, uh, if you're a Hulu Plus subscriber, you're, uh, you search for a show, it'll come up uh, as free, and then they say they're going to add more partners beyond Hulu Plus, beyond Hulu. They are now showing a trailer for Amazon Studios' upcoming shows. So again, this, this is one of the themes we've been talking about on Tech News Today, which is that everybody is creating content, which is creating a problem for people who might want to watch whatever they want to watch, because the chances that you're going to have everything is pretty low. It's pretty low. On the other hand, these things are either free or $8 a month, So um, at least the web stuff. So it's fairly easy to assemble a, a catalog of all this stuff mm -hmm. for a lot less than you pay for cable TV. Yeah. Yeah, so back to your point about the importance of price, from what we've seen so far, this is not anything that anybody's going to say, oh, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm going to throw my Apple TV in the trash, I'm going to get rid of the Roku box, whatever, uh, and jump to this because it's so compelling. And, and so, so, so far, this is a product that is maybe better, but is essentially parallel to what's already on the market. That's right. So it's got to be price, or they are going to go after an entirely different demographic uh, and... You know, of you know, who knows? Maybe they've done some research that found that Amazon, you know, major Amazon Prime customers tend not to have competitive offerings or whatever. But it, it, so far, it's the the feature set does doesn't look like it's going to be. And again, it's, it it may be just parallel to to the Kindle Fire, where they say, well, you know, there's there's iPad uh, tablets and there's Android tablets, and and we've got our own tablet, and it's pretty much the same thing. Um, we'll say it's got this feature that's slightly better or different, and it's a little bit cheaper, but it's essentially the same product. Yep. So they're talking about Alpha House. Um, the two shows they launched last year, uh, they renewed this show. Um, they didn't renew uh, betas with their, their nerd show. Yeah. 
he's they're doing their thing again about um, Alpha House became the the most watched show on Amazon after its release. Oh, this what is, is why we didn't know who Peter Limp was because it turns out it wasn't Peter Limp. We were reading uh, our live bloggers have uh, have let us down. Um, who this, was this? That? Uh, this is Peter Larson, um, Larson, who the found said was going to be presenting, um, and he's got a title. He's got a, a title affiliated with the Kindle product line, not the video product line. Oh, okay, all right. It makes sense that we had never heard of Peter Limp. There you go. Dude, don't trust what you read on the internet. Yeah, that's right. Good, good point. Only what you hear. That's right. Exactly. Or see. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, this is this is um, you know th this this thing. This is what how the, how Amazon hawked. Uh, it's always bothered me how they've promoted the success of their Kindle line because they've always said, "Oh, we you know we're huge. We have," and they never tell you how many they've sold. They've never said it, and they say things like, uh, "The Kindle's the." Best-selling device on Amazon. Best-selling consumer electronics device of any kind on Amazon. Well, yeah, because that's where you buy it. Whereas those other things are available. Of course, it's going to sell better than the Apple products, which you can get yeah, in the Apple they, Store. Their 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 refusal to release any information about any of their products is is comical and 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 time honored. Uh, and then every so often they sneak in a tiny little thing that might be relevant. Uh, a couple quarters ago, they. They announced, buried in a press release, that there are tens of millions of Prime subscribers, which is the first time I've ever talked about how many people are using Prime, which means there are at least 20 million. Um, and that was an interesting number to, to, to have out in, in, in their true Amazonian way. They didn't come out and say that. They sort of buried it in there. Now, uh, we're hearing that the remote control has a microphone and that the, the, the box is voice command. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So why would you hold up a why, if it's got voice control? Why would you want to hold something in your hand? Because you otherwise would have to compete with the sound of the TV itself. Right, right. I, I get that. That's why it might work. But it seems silly to be holding up. A, a, if you've got the remote in your hand, it seems silly to stick it in front of your face. Yeah. Right. You're already able to use your hands to hold it. Right. And this is, uh, I guess, defaults to the search function. So when you talk. Uh, I guess you would press a button or something and indicate that you're doing a voice command thing. It just searches for what you say. Uh, so this, is, this is this is so this is the curse of Siri, right? Has trained us to go. All right, let's see how this works in the real world. Yeah. Um, when you're in your living room with with your dog and and your significant other making a bunch of noise, will will it work? Um, if it gives you the wrong show, um, are you going to uh, tire of that right away? Yeah. It works great. Or to 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 your point about Siri, it, 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 will it tell you that the server's unavailable, or mm -hmm. you know, frustrate you with you know with a dashed expectation about performance or something like that? I mean, these if you recall, Siri was actually pretty good in the first two or three weeks, and then it just somehow got worse. Uh, and people who are super enthusiastic about it initially soured on it and stopped using it. I'm one of those people, uh, and you know, the, like you say, the 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 benefit of this depends 100% on how well it works. And that is information we, of course, don't have right now. So, and, and, and since we're filling time here, right, so, so one of the things that people have been talking about when they talk about the future of TV for a while is, what if you could use gesture uh, to control your TV or voice? So I think this is the first attempt to use voice. Um, I'm sure like all this stuff, it'll be fairly rudimentary at the beginning and maybe we'll get better and, and maybe you will get to a world where i guess i guess i should strike that i, I think you can yell at your xbox right now um and yes. in a long way it might it might find what you want so um but you'll notice that no one's really raving about yelling at their xbox um and getting it to change channels that's right and by we'll the see. way you don't have to talk into a remote with the xbox you can talk to the room and and the recognition is not bad it's not great but it's not bad now, it's also interesting to note that years ago, uh, Steve Jobs talked about the living room and pointed out, and he said, we've cracked the code. I don't remember ex his exact words, but he said, you know, we've we found the interface that will make television make a lot of sense. And every I think a lot of people 
assumed that the most likely candidate for that code cracking he was referring to was the use of Siri and voice command. And there was speculation uh, galore, as there always is with Apple products, that you'd be talking into a remote control, into, into a, some future Apple remote. Now, again, this was years and years ago, and people have been waiting and, for and predicting that was, right, an that Apple was TV. Right, Paul Isaacson book, um, um, and there's always been a question about what crack the code means. And I think because the book came out around the same time that Siri was coming out, or within a year or so, that people sort of connected those things together. It's always possible that he wasn't talking about the interface at all. Um, but actual programming or something else. I always think that it's, it's more interesting to think about sort of what programming you're going to be, uh, what programming will be available to you and at what price more than, you know, can you use your fingers or, or your, your voice to control it. Um, it's easier to solve around, um, you know, discovery and voice and, and gestures than it is to sort of change the way the TV industrial complex works. Yep. Absolutely. So just to recap what we've learned so far, Amazon has announced the Fire TV. It's got a remote with a microphone in it. It's very search-centric, and they are bragging about the performance, both of the box itself for flipping through movies and TV shows and that sort of thing. And they're also bragging about the performance of the microphone and voice command, voice recognition system, which, again, defaults to search. So you presumably press a button to notify it that you're going to be uh, using a voice command, you talk, whatever you say becomes the search, uh, finds your show, you say, yeah, that's it, and you start watching. Uh, it also has uh, un the, in some of the few unusual features. It's mostly a workaday standard uh, TV box of the type you might expect, but there are a few cool features. One of them is that it has a list of recommendations, which it already starts to queue up so that when you start to play them, they've already been at least partially downloaded and they play instantly. Uh, that is... Uh, kind of a cool feature, uh, but so far I think um, Peter and I would agree that there's nothing here that is just a must-have feature that would cause you to throw everything else you have away and move to this uh, if you're happy with something else. It seems to be more like something that would be for people who haven't moved to a, a streaming box of any kind, uh, and this could be their first one. Or the price is going to be so, so compelling, zero for example, uh, for certain people, probably Amazon Prime customers, that it would be compelling on that front. But uh, we'll see. Hey, Mike. Hi, Peter. Leo Laporte joining you. Sorry, I'm a Thank little late. Us. I forgot Jeff Bezos <gasps> tends to be fast and on time. Yes. <laughs> you know, the thing that strikes me, Amazon's opportunity here, there are three opportunities, and Amazon could conceivably win on at least one of them. Price is where Amazon tends to win because, of course, they're going to make money, as they've said time and time again, on when you use it, not when you buy it. Right. Uh, although at $35, it's going to be hard to beat the Chromecast. Yeah. And as that gets more functional, I right. think it's going to be a real strong competitor. Secondly, interface. And, and this is really an opportunity. I don't see Amazon doing well on this. They've not done well on interfaces in the past. But uh, uh, there is an opportunity there. Voice recognition is important. Although I have to point out the Xbox One has it. I don't use it all that much. My television has it. It has it in the remote, very much like this device, my Samsung television. And I don't use it much. Um, both also have hand gesture recognition, which I find more annoying than useful. So UI has not been solved. Even the Apple TV, where Apple's famous for user, user interface, is, right. is, a, is fairly unusable at this point because they've got so many channels on it. So that's a second place Amazon could win, but I don't expect them to win. And, and third, and this is something that is, is, is a simple thing, and I guess it's UI, is this global search. And I think that's important. Yep. Uh, TiVo has that, the ability to search across a variety of devices uh, your on-demand, your TiVo uh, products, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu Plus. If you can search a variety of services and say where, not only where can I find it, but as Amazon is doing, where the best price is. Exactly, that's a pretty compelling prices. product. And of course, Amazon does have a price advantage with Prime, and I know they haven't mentioned a price yet, but I imagine this will have a discounted Prime right. usage. And there's also the uh, the threat that Amazon could do what they did with the Kindle. I don't know that they're still doing this with Kindle, but that is to subsidize it and sell it below their own well, cost. Exactly. To drag you in so that you become part of the enthusiastic Amazon customer in general, which is very yeah, profitable. Exactly. And that, that's really where they have a huge advantage because unlike, say, an Apple, which has to make money on hardware, Amazon doesn't. Right. They need yeah, I mean, I guess I would think about this the other way, right? They've got They've got a video service. They're spending a lot of money on more than a billion dollars a year to promote Prime, right? Um, that video service isn't used very much. You build a box like this that makes that service more attractive. Um, well, so whether you charge 35 bucks or you bundle it for free, I think, again, the, the whole goal here is to get you 
eventually to become an Amazon Prime subscriber at $100 a year. Um, so, you know, it doesn't need, by the way, it doesn't need to be that much better than an Apple TV or a Roku box. It just needs to be available and to have lots of Amazon's customers know about it. We know Amazon's very anxious to control this space. They bought Love Film in Europe. They rebranded it Amazon Prime. This has been a, a strategy. In fact, if you read the Everything Store, uh, Brad Stone's great book about Amazon, you, you saw that this was a, this was something Bezos really wanted. He, yeah. I think he sees himself as not only the Everything Store for products, but also for content. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's where they started. That's and right. and what, what more important content is there today than television and movies? That's right. Absolutely. Now, one of the most interesting hints that we've seen in all this is that one of the primary menus is says games and so we've seen a leaked uh photo of an of of what appears to be an amazon game controller from a couple of weeks ago and here they have a menu item called games i'm underwhelmed on that because of course we have games on the roku yeah. these boxes in order to make them price competitive have to be so ch so cheesy the processors have to be so slow there's no graphics process mm -hmm. i mean Angry Birds is tough for the Roku to play. Yeah. You don't expect great gaming on anything that they do, unless there's an opportunity here perhaps with a streaming gaming service. Yeah. Um, well, the fact that they have a, a an Xbox-style controller tells me that this isn't hmm. going to be like the Roku. Yeah. So it's... Uh, yeah, that would be, that'd be interesting. Yeah, but my, my colleague uh, Eric uh, Johnson has reported that they, they are, are courting developers, trying to hire developers, um, including developers for, for high end, with backgrounds making high end games. Um, I would be shocked if they're going to roll, roll out a, a sort of PlayStation or Xbox style device or game um, along with this. I would think they'd start off with some more rudimentary stuff. Well, I, so if well, you I, wanted to use this for, a, if you wanted to play Angry Birds on your TV, and I don't know why you would, um, you could. Now, there are already many ways to do it. So that's right. I don't know well, if that's a strong feature. One hint could be that it could be for children. It could be like right. a starter gaming system for children. They're talking now about free time, which is Amazon's paid subscription product for kids that gives them access to games, ebooks, movies, and apps. And now they're going to probably make a big play. And this makes a lot of sense for them as a business. It's kind of the Ronald McDonald approach to, you know, you get them young and sort of get people using your product. If you're a gamer, there's nothing you can do here that you can't do on your PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, Xbox 360. And those are serious game platforms. So if, if, if games are what's important to you. Yeah. And and they, they also talked about how music is coming next month, that you're going to be able to play music. I've never seen a compelling, I've never seen people respond positively to playing music on a television. No. It's just people don't and want to do that. Like Netflix, this is something everything does. Yes. I have Pandora on 15 yes. devices. I don't need another Pandora right. device. I do. I am impressed by the fact that they call these apps. That implies that you can install additional apps, that you can install additional channels. This is something Apple, for reasons I will never understand, has, has resisted doing on the Apple TV yep. since day one. It's something we've all wanted since day one. That's right. Apple really wants to control the universe. Maybe Amazon doesn't. And and. The, you know, they do have an app store for Android, um, maybe an app store for this device. Maybe it isn't. Have they said if it's an Android device? They have not. They probably won't. No, but it, but it is. It it's, must be. It's, it's running. It's, it's, uh, the people I've talked to who are making apps for it have told me it's an Android device. Yeah. Um, and, and a quad-core ARM processor, is that correct? Yeah. The parallel here is the Kindle Fire, right? A lot of the apps that right. are already available on Kindle Fire will be available on, on, on this box. Yeah. And again, I think this children's thing is something that is... It's a differentiator. There, Perhaps, Amazon yeah. really emphasizes that, and and they're they're talking about this free time for kids. Parents can set the limits, time limits. You know, that's they, a good they set thing. the bedtime and all right. that. That's compelling for parents, and then the kids get to choose whatever the parents have allowed them to see. So they, they feel like they they have freedom of choice among children's App, programs. Apple TV does many of these things as well, yes. including yeah, uh, now, several. now they're going to talk about games a little bit. Uh, it is interesting that the the con they actually have a gaming style controller for this. Yes. And that the, the 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 leaked photos did not look like a children's game, you know. Right. Uh, what comes with Cracker Jacks? That's fantastic. Now I might buy it. <laughs> or maybe it's the prize inside a Cracker Jack box. Could be. I think that this is Amazon's version of one more thing. Uh, this is bonus. One more thing would be a price. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, this is casual gaming. This is smartphone-style yeah. gaming. I think that makes That's sense. Right. So, Peter, you've talked to people who have, who have been developing for this. Uh-huh. And it is casual gaming? Oh, no, I don't, I don't know about the games. But I do know yeah. about, about, about some of the, the video yeah. apps, right? Yeah. So that's straightforward. So if you're able to uh, uh, watch Netflix on your Kindle Fire, you can watch it here. 
Um, here's the question about casual gaming, right? The casual games work on your tablet and your phone because of your expectation in a lot of ways about what that game should be. It shouldn't be that involved. It's something you can play for a few minutes on the go. Um, once you move it to a TV, is that an acceptable, is it an acceptable experience to play a casual game there? Yeah. Chat room's telling me there is a GPU in this. I don't know how capable a GPU, I mean, a smartphone has a GPU these days. I don't yeah. know if that's what that means really. So now Mike Frizzini is from Amazon Game Studios. Did you know there was an Amazon Game Studios? Uh, apparently he's <laughs> coming up to the stage. I'm waiting for an Amazon game. That's right. <laughs> you got a studio. Where's the game? Wow. That's interesting. This, it feels like a Me Too device, but Amazon, as, as does the Kindle Fire, but Amazon yeah. really does want to control the universe. And yep. um, if they didn't have this, they'd probably feel left out. Yeah. Yeah, I should point out, by the way, they, they've, they've uh, in the past, they, they tried to get into this business by just simply buying Roku. Right. Um, so they've, they've had their eye on this for a long time. And again, it's, it's a big gap in, in the product right now, the fact that they don't have a dedicated box. Um, if you want to watch uh, Amazon Instant Video on TV, you can do it using an Apple TV or other devices, but why not try to control that route directly? Yeah. Now, Mike Frizzini is saying that by next month, we'll have thousands of games available for customers to play. And they're working with big game developers like Disney and it's EA. It's Android. That means yes. we're going to port Android games. There's That's no right. way you get a thousand games without porting Android games. That's right. Still many missing details. Price, of ah. course, availability, how you hook it up to the TV. Have it's, they even shown it? Do we know what it looks like? Uh, yeah, it looks it's look, looks like a boxy Apple TV. They've saved that they've created an app that allows you to use the phones and tablets you already own uh, to play games. Uh, we know, know how well that works with the Apple yes. TV. Yeah. So so the <laughs> device that. itself it looks like a I, I guess is a slightly larger than an Apple TV, maybe a little bit thinner, uh, and it has a pretty standard remote control, yeah. kind of on the small side, but big, much bigger than the Apple. TV remote. The thing that really makes this all of this possible is is, is Android, and, and it's, it's it a little bit kind of frost Google because without a free open operating system yeah. that you can easily put on inexpensive commodity hardware, mm -hmm. you don't have a product like this. That's right. So the price is thirty nine ninety nine. Oh ho! Okay, there you go. Yeah. Very focused to the living room. You've yep. got kids. You've got gaming. You've got karaoke. Of course, you've got television. Mm -hmm. um, they're shooting right at uh, Chromecast right. with that right. price. Interesting. Or wow. Or a thousand Amazon coins. Is that the controller or is that the whole device? That Oh no, that's, no. That's just the controller, thirty nine ninety nine. And it comes with a thousand Amazon coins. Oh yes, okay. An imaginary money. You got that right. Thirty nine ninety nine for the controller. And they are showing it. and that looks exactly like the one that was leaked. It is, isn't it? Yeah, the leaks yeah. seem to have hit this uh, spot on in every respect. Yes. So that's what Apple's pitch really is this is not commoditized hardware this is an a7 chip this is not commoditized software this is ios yeah this is not a commodity experience um and we make money on the hardware so right. it's not a cheap experience although 99 bucks is still i think within the price range that if you're looking at a hundred dollar device of any kind i think yeah. roku or i think though increasingly our audience has eight ways to do all of this yeah. I sit down at my TV. My TV has is smart. It can do mm -hmm. much of this. Yep. My, my my Xbox is smart. It can do much of this. So here's my, the here's the thing, Leo. If you're Amazon, right? You 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 want you you don't really care about our audience. I, right? It's not for us, well, yeah. right? It, it's for the people who literally don't know about any of this, um, who might only be encountering streaming TV when they they turn on their Samsung and there's some baffling uh, menu of of options. Who don't know how any of this stuff works. Um, there's, it's, it's all of us know how to get streaming video on our TV already. Right. You don't need these devices at all. So the question is, how will they market this to the rest of the country and the rest of the it world? It is true. The numbers I've seen uh, uh, of people who have smart TVs but either don't know it or don't use them, it, right. it's the vast majority. Right. But I, but to me, that do, this doesn't solve that problem because that doesn't those that group isn't going to go out buy a box, hundred dollar box or whatever this costs, right. plug it, figure out how to plug it into the TV and how to use it. That it doesn't solve a problem. Right. Well, what if it, it adds to the problem. It shows up in the uh, with the UPS guy or the FedEx guy the next time you order something from Amazon Prime. That'd be kind of interesting. You think they'll yeah. give it away? Give it away, or you just make it very easy for you to end up picking it up the next time you order something from Amazon. If they want to push this, they could push this. They had a they had a patent uh, uh, that came out. I believe it was a patent. That's how the news came to us. That they would predict what you would order and then put it on the trucks <laughs> or warehouses nearby. And, and they might even have it on the truck driving around your neighborhood. And when you order it, it shows up in five minutes or something like that. 
they you could imagine some crazy thing like that Forget with this. Forget pre-crime. I got pre-purchase. I mean, they could come to your house with the box with, the, with the, everything and say, "Here, you want to you want this? We can yeah. just add it to your account. Tap here, and you know, really make it super easy for you to take it." They're playing uh, Asphalt 8 on it right now, and uh, according to The Verge, it's playing pretty smoothly, as it would on a high-end Android device. This is probably very comparable to a high-end smartphone. Yeah. Average price of a paid game is $1.85. Remember, they did just raise the price of Amazon Prime 20 bucks. I don't yeah. think that's enough to accommodate something like this. And yeah. in the past, they've been surprisingly reluctant to tie things like this into Amazon Prime. Yeah. I keep expecting they'll offer a... Yeah. free or low-cost tablet with Prime purchase. And they've, nev they've never done that. Yeah. With Prime, you get Prime. Yeah. And some movies, as, as Peter pointed out, that you don't know you have. Right. Fire TV is an interesting name. They're, they're obviously going to consider this part of the Kindle Fire line. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds like the, the box doesn't have a good cooling system. Fire made sense with a Kindle because you Kindle a fire. Right. It, right. I'm not sure if fire makes sense if it's in my that's right in it's my stereo point. cabinet. <laughs> that's probably not something I want. Right. <laughs> so this thing a dollar eighty five is an average game. Yes, yeah. these are Android games. That's right. What these right. Are. So yeah. so so this is not gonna if if you if you're considering a PlayStation or an Xbox or you've got one on on next to your TV, you're not going to make room for this. Nope. One thing they could add, Peter, though, that they, they currently know uh, is not common on Android devices is online play. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see that on any phone, even though you could do that. Right. Quiz Up is the only online game yeah, I've played right. on my Android phone. A trivia game. That's just doing very well, by the way, probably mm -hmm. because you can have yeah. this cooperative. There, there are a lot of casual games that will let you do multiplayer online. Are there? Oh, okay. Built in, yeah. I mean, it's not a great experience because, again, it's not built for that. But uh, I'm not really a, an avid gamer, but I've certainly seen it on, on my iPhone, for instance. Well, there's asynchronous stuff, words with friends, things like that. Yeah. Is there you can, you can, is you there head-to-head -head gaming? Do head-to-head -head racing and, okay. and shoot them up. Again, it's, it's, okay. it's, if you had an option to do something else, you would do it. It's not great, right. but it is doable. What would be killer in this with this product is to be able to play against somebody who, else who's on a mobile device and you're on the TV, and they're you know and just sort of be plugged into the mobile, uh, syst you know the mobile system for the other app users. In in other words, these app if these apps are just Android apps for the most part that will function like Android apps that would be, and and interact with other Android apps to the extent that those apps are mobile that would be a a, well, here's, a pretty killer feature. Here's one thing I would expect them or be interested in. It certainly would be a, a strong feature if you had a Kindle Fire tablet yeah. that it would somehow tie to it and you'd be able to watch the same programming, play the same games on your Fire tablet down the hall. Yeah. Might be an interesting. Right. Well, I think they were saying earlier that you'd be able to, that they're synced, right? So if you're right. watching, uh, if, you, okay. if you're watching something on Amazon uh, on your tablet and stop and you, it moves to the TV. I guess we haven't seen anything so far that isn't actually already on the Fire, the Kindle Fire, right? Right. But I think that is the that is the market here. I mean, it seems to me that who you know who is this for? This is for people who either have an Amazon Prime account, who are who are uh, using the, their children's thing with all you can eat content for kids, and this just makes it more compelling for kids, or are using Kindle Fire tablet, and it makes it more compelling for those folks, and it sort of wards off the coming wave of streaming TV options to a certain extent for existing customers. That, at the very least, has got to be what this is about. It's, you know, it's a, it's a defensive move uh, at, uh, to, to, because there's just about to be, we're about to be clobbered with so many options for, for streaming TV that are going to be, way, frankly, probably way more compelling than this. SCV Zero, which is, a, a, a com they say, a combination of a tower defense and a shooter, does have uh, multiplayer. So this, this will have a multiplayer capability. You know, it strikes me, much as the Apple TV was just Apple saying, hey, well, look, we've already built the iPhone. We could probably just put this in a box and put it in your TV. This is really, isn't it a Kindle Fire in a box? Yeah. They're, they're talking about Amazon Game Studios, which is making original games. Like rocket dinosaurs. Now this, I'm interested in. Like, let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Game where everybody wins. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and again, you know, it's, we're, we're watching, we're looking at screen craps, screen right. caps of, a, of a live stream, and you really won't know until you play this. It's it's hard, what, and what you typically do when you want to show off a new game is you want to make it look as amazing as possible in the in in, in the previews. When you play it, it's it's a little more underwhelming. Um, by the way, that's true for even Xbox and, and PlayStation games. We we all of us collectively here can't imagine that it's something that is going to be competitive with a dedicated game console. Right. 
Right. Um, but it's still going to be a fun way to uh, while away a few minutes. Yep. It, the uh, room is fairly small. It's a it's a super duper living room with a giant seventy inch uh, television screens yeah. surrounding uh, people seated in plush sofas, uh, table lamps. They've really tried to make it a, uh, um, a a living room simulcrum, and I know that because I've seen Christina Warren's um, video of uh, of the event. It doesn't look like there's more than a hundred journalists in there. Yeah. Um, Peter, does Recode have somebody in the in the room? We have not a soul. <laughs> we are all in California. <laughs> I guess you have to be on the East Coast to really. Uh, you wouldn't uh, want to fly yeah, out for this. Normally, normally, I would be there, but uh, yeah. uh, uh, we we are all gathered on the West Coast. Yeah. It always disappoints me when the companies don't do streams of uh, their announcements, and right, uh, especially an announcement about streaming video. <laughs> Uh, but it's complicated. It's a hard thing to do, and it's a, hard, a really hard thing to do well, and there's nothing more to And one of the reasons Apple didn't stream for so long is they knew that so many people would watch the stream, and they were concerned that the stream would just crash, and that makes a much worse experience. That's right. So um, watching live blogs is the best we're going to be able to do today. Although Amazon, with all those servers, all those, all those computers, you'd think yeah. uh, they could figure out. Do they do any live streaming? I'm trying to think. I... I don't know. The Amazon Web Service is certainly very capable. So I'm, as we're talking here, I'm calling up a, a story uh, my colleague Eric wrote. Uh, in February, Amazon job listings call for game veterans with big mm -hmm. budget experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and also pointing out that they acquired a game studio called Double Helix Games. So this is something they've been sort of crashing fairly, fairly recently. Um, and I would imagine some of the more impressive games will be yet to come. Double Helix does uh, some good halfway casual games earthworm gym yep. for instance um but that's the kind of game you'd want to see on this platform i don't you're not going to see a call of duty no way clone certainly not one written in six months premium products non-premium prices is the slide we're looking at right now they also pointed out uh, that you can play a game while music is playing while pandora, pandora. is on yeah woohoo yes <laughs> so <laughs> that tells you right there we ain't playing call of duty well maybe we are Maybe we are. You know what? You know what? I remember when uh, when they launched the last version of the Xbox, they said that, that people were frequently uh, uh, streaming audio while they were playing games. You know, um, Hard Rock mm -hmm. uh, would be probably pretty good while you're shooting up. Uh, Guzzling Red Bull. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, I can actually I see that. You're watching live coverage of Amazon's streaming TV box announcement, pretty much as predicted. Yep. Uh, in every respect. The one yeah. rumor I really was fascinated by, and they haven't said anything yet, is that Amazon would itself start uh, creating streaming content. Yeah. Um, uh, or, or, or put live television, you know, do a, right. a box that would have live TV, would have uh, That's right. more of a competitor to, uh, I don't know what you would say, to a to To a cable, cable subscription, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And, and every, we're clearly moving, you know, the industry is clearly trying to get to that point the sticking point there is the, of course the Absolutely. content industry apple's been trying to make this deal right first with time warner now with comcast right and no they don't want that right no they don't they're, they're do they'll do it but they'll do it only kicking and screaming when they have to because everybody wants to watch on the internet and, and eventually they'll have to they'll have to now, 99 bucks is that the price we're seeing or is uh no this is a guess in our chat room all right uh no, somebody no. is saying it is 99 dollars. 99 dollars ships yeah. today and that's about what you'd expect. They're gonna they're yeah. gonna hit the Apple TV price. That's right. Now this was uh, the the rumors, or maybe it's more than rumor, was that this was going to be announced in time for the holiday season. Well, they they made it. <laughs> and they, well, the last year. Oh, and then they delayed <laughs> it. If the holiday season is Easter, that's, that's right. absolutely that's right. right. That's right. They, they, they were trying. They were. It was scheduled to run last year in time for for the holidays, and they shelved it. Interesting. So, um, um, I don't see it on Amazon's site yet. Ships today. Yeah. But, uh, so there you go. It's it's aimed directly at Apple TV and Roku. Yep. Uh, um, it's the same with more. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's well, be is it more? Well, they're, they're going to say you can play games on it, and they're right. also going to talk about things that a normal person wouldn't care about, like the speed of the video, right. which a, a, a regular human wouldn't care about. Games are a differentiator, though. I mean, you can't yeah. do that. Uh, you could do it a little bit on a Roku. Right. Apple uh, may may well add games at some point. I, it's capable, I guess. Yep. Okay. Well, there you go. I believe that if you get the controller and the remote, it's 140 bucks. You know, 
I suppose I will have to buy this so we could talk about it, and I don't mm -hmm. even want to. Yeah. I have enough of this stuff. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the reaction from... Right. And the, the, the problem is the people who want to... Who would buy this are the people who already have. Yeah. You haven't really said anything that I don't... That those people don't want. Right. And so convincing again, that, that novice user that you're mm -hmm. talking about, Peter... It's right. not so going to be easy. Think, well, or it, it, maybe it's a, a lot easier than we think. Maybe maybe the next time you 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 go to Amazon.com, this thing is front and center. The next right. time you search for a video on on Amazon, it says, "Hey, there's a hundred dollar box that you could get really easily. Press a button here." Um, again, they they really have not. Uh, they've almost deliberately hid their video capabilities so far. So right. if they want to push this, they certainly could. It's for people like well, it's all the people who don't own the boxes and who probably aren't watching this live stream. Um, who haven't considered buying a box uh, or have been thinking about it and haven't pulled the trigger yet. That's their opportunity. My experience with those people is it's too damn complicated already. Right. I mean, if you haven't figured out how to use the smart apps on your television, it's going to be a tough right. road to hoe for Apple or Amazon to convince people, oh, no, but this is easier. It's not. Smart apps, people don't know how to program their remote controls. Right. Every device you get comes with its own remote control. People are confused about which control to use for what and they yep. use multi you know it's it, it's a huge mess and that's the real thing that everybody wants one of the big things that everybody wants somebody to solve which is the existing complexity the existing problems with multiple boxes they're all incompatible and throw into the mix is the fact that these different boxes come with uh, original content now so it's so now there's a couple of shows here that that are Amazon only so if you have something else you can't see it but then you know, if you want to watch uh, House of Cards, you you know, it, so it's it's a big it's a big mess, and somebody needs to solve it. You know, uh, John Jean Louis Gasset, uh, the famous uh, I don't know what you'd call him, futurist, former Apple executive, talks calls it the basket of remotes problem, and right. it's, a, it's a brilliant it's, thing it, that he it's applies. Absolutely true. He applies it to other things. He applies it to the Internet of Things, for example. Internet of Things is going to fail, he says, because we haven't even solved the TV thing. Right. And so, but the TV thing is a real thing, and it's a real problem, and this is, you know, yeah, this is expected, all the rumors were true, et cetera, but this doesn't solve anybody's problem except maybe Amazon's problem, right. you know? They've uh, wrapped up the event, so we, that's it. We've heard it all. Peter, what do you think? Uh, I, uh, the thing that I want to see is, is, is the way they promote this to their customers. Um, the, the hardware is what we thought it would be. We weren't sure about whether it's a gaming device. It, it can be a gaming device. Um, so the question is, who's going to buy this? How are they going to know about it? How are they going to get it to their house? Um, I'm still interested in the fact that they have yet to sort of bundle this with Prime. Um, because, again, the point of this is to make Prime more valuable. So I'm still surprised they have yet to do that, as I wrote today. They still are selling Kindles, though. You still can't get a free Kindle, and you would think yeah. at this point you'd be bundling Kindles for free, especially at the very low end. But if you want a Kindle, the cheapest Kindle is still seventy bucks. So uh, uh, they are they are not they are not giving their hardware away yet. Uh, so we'll be interested to see how they promote it. My sense of this is that it, yes, it's a Me Too product, but what it does it's it's going to do what it needs to do, which is it put Amazon at the starting line along with Google, along with Apple, along with Microsoft, along with Sony. We're now all at the starting line, and the race is to see who can create a box, A, that's easy to use, but more importantly, B, takes over the functions of your cable box. The first person to make those deals with the content companies, with with, with live television, and is the one that's going to win this race. If Here's if the thing, Leo. They're, they're, you are, it's very unlikely that one company is going to be out in front with that, because the, 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 you're talking about the, the cable programmers and, and the guys who supply the broadband to you. And what they don't want to do is have another Kingmaker situation, which they did with music business and iTunes. Right. Um, it, they're not going to give one company features that some, somebody else can't get. So the stuff that you're talking about is just as likely to be supplied by Comcast as it is Apple or Amazon. Uh, ab absolutely perfect point in fact uh, you know it's it's one thing for apple to be sitting at the table with comcast it's another thing for them to get a deal done comcast right. is never going to do a deal with apple um you're right they're going to do their own uh, box of course historically they've done a terrible job but i think it's interesting to see to hear uh, um roberts say we want to be apple we want to be our we're modeling comcast right. on apple what does that mean it's not yeah. just good customer service right. And you don't know how they're going to market and promote this. So you can imagine everything that somebody might order on Amazon that's even vaguely living room related. They'll say, hey, well, how about this? You know, it's normally valued at $99. We'll give it to you for $49.99 if you order it with this, whatever you're ordering. You know, they, they could do all kinds of things. And th th this is how 
uh, Amazon has marketed the Kindle to a certain extent. It's relentless. It's like rust. They're constantly pushing it at you. If you go to Amazon, it's and of course, as everybody, exciting as rust. Yeah, exactly. Too. Exciting as rust too. And but it's you know it's if you go to you know. It, it, Amazon.com and the people who shop on Amazon and have Amazon Prime accounts, this is, you know, they're going to be probably chipping away at this audience from now on to embrace this solution. And, you know, it's it, who knows if it'll if it'll go anywhere. But again, I really think the the most interesting to me and compelling aspect of this is the focus on children. If you if you're a parent of young children, you can buy into this Amazon uh, uh, program where it's all you can eat. Uh, children's content with parental controls that spans from tablets to now the TV set. And it includes books, it includes movies, includes TV shows, includes other games, other things. And it's a, it's a kind of a compelling argument that they have that's a little bit unique in, in, in the industry. And we're seeing now the, the first page go up on the uh, Amazon uh, site. Your partner in Prime, the best way to enjoy unlimited access, is the number one item on this massive selection Voice search that actually works, tiny box, huge specs, easy to set up and use. They're hitting all those points that we've talked about. Instance, you know, if you go to Amazon.com, it's now front and center on the home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, it so, took them a while, but they, they've, they've got it there. Thing. So that that is the thing to watch. And, guys, I, I love talking to you. My job is to type. Peter, so get I'm to work. Go, I'm go right. <laughs> Peter Take Kafka care. from Recode, you're great. We, we appreciate your time. And uh, yep. always yep. a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks again, Peter. Uh, I've, I've ordered one. I'll have it tomorrow. Um, uh, because I'm a Prime member, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll have a review unit uh, in house for you. They may you. have it on the truck right outside. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it shows up later this afternoon. Uh, they knew I would buy one, <laughs> um, so we'll have a review for you on before you buy on Tuesday and probably sooner. Uh, yep. But uh, I have already ordered it. Unfortunately, I had to. You know what I had? To, well, you know I don't see here is the controller. I'm, maybe that's going to be l later. Oh, yeah, there it is. Add to accessories, the Amazon Fire game controller. Yeah, thirty nine ninety nine. I guess I'll have to get that, too. Yep. Got to get it. <laughs> Got to have it. I've added it to my order. All right. So shall we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. We've got a very busy day today. Lots more yeah. to come. By the way, does it come with the popcorn, or is that just yeah, comes left with over from when they were testing it? That is kind of a disgusting picture. That, that's why they call it the Fire TV. It actually makes popcorn. <laughs> it's so hot. You put a bowl of popcorn on it and it pops. Coming, coming up, of course, TNT. Mike Elgin uh, will have more uh, on this subject and all the tech news of the day. Then right after that, at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC, our conversation with Vince Cerf. That's a live Google Hangout um, uh, talking about the future of the Internet. Uh, of course, uh, that's taking the place of Windows Weekly, which will be later this week, Wednesday, or sorry, Friday, because of uh, the Build right. Conference. And then uh, tonight, I want to give a little plug to our friendly hams, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Ham Nation, uh, a special, couple of special guests, but Joe Walsh, formerly of the Eagles, the guy who composed the Ham Nation theme song, and, a, and an avid ham will join uh, the folks on Ham Nation. Awesome. Now, now the, the your, your conversation with Vince Cerf, Will that also be streamed on live.twit.tv? Yeah, we'll be streaming it. It'll be streamed on YouTube. It's a joint venture between us okay. and uh, Google's Take Action initiative. And um, so we will be streaming that live. You'll be able to watch that live. There'll be a QA. and a you should, you should join the Hangout, uh, and you'll see details on that on uh, our Google Plus page. You can you can find that at uh, by searching Google Plus for Twit Hangouts. Yeah. And that'll take you right to the sign up for the right. participate in the Hangout. Or, or google.com slash take action. Yep. Um, Nice job, Mike. This is uh, about what we expected. That's right. The The wild cards were games and price. And so from my own personal uh, uh, prediction, you know, I think that uh, I was kind of expecting that the game would come later, the game controller, the gaming uh, announcement. It, it came right out, and I was expecting it to be a little cheaper than $99, and it wasn't. So. Yeah. What's interesting, uh, Amazon, first and foremost, is a marketplace. And so if you go to the page for Amazon's $99 Fire TV, the 1080p streaming media player they just announced, and you scroll down right at the bottom, compare to Apple TV, Chromecast, and Roku, and they, and you bet, they'll sell you something. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> One way or the other, uh, they're all $99 except for the Chromecast 
Uh, as far as check boxes, it, uh, they've managed to uh, set it up so that Fire TV has things that none of them have, like voice search, optical audio out, certified Dolby Digital Plus surround sound. Yes, and Minecraft Pocket Edition. <laughs> but the very year, important. The year is still young. By the end of the year, by the coming holiday season, I think there are going to be multiple uh, products. With there already are. Re remember, Veronica Belmont set up a great spreadsheet uh, on uh, Google Spreadsheets, bit.ly slash set-top, that will show you dozens of set-top boxes and their features, and it's so hard to keep track of. Yeah. One checkbox that is missing from the Fire TV in the chat room noted this, no HBO Go. And I think that that's exactly the kind of thing Peter Kafka was talking about. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be difficult to get the content guys right. in bed. That's right. There you go. All right. Well, I'm going to... Just say thanks for joining us and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>